morning everybody. We are back in Arkansas as you can see and the colors have changed since we were last here. And we are camping at this beautiful spot that we found two vlogs prior ago by this waterfall. And it looks like the water's not running as much as it was because I guess we haven't had any rain here. But it's still so pretty. Sound. You can still hear it all the way back where our tent is. And it's just so peaceful. We are exhausted from that trip. We just felt like we just kept going and going and going and going. And we got home and then we just kept going and going and going. So, we decided we were going to take it easy. That's it. So we slept in. I slept in. It's probably like 8.45 when I woke up. Cody already came out here and did yoga. So I can't wait to do yoga right here. That's just going to be so cool. So serene. Anyway. So I'm going to head back up here to camp. And show you how we set everything up. And then I'm going to make breakfast this morning. I'm making something I have not made camping before. Since we have the oven. And it's just opened up so many possibilities. I'm going to make a croissant. I'm trying to think how it is. It's like a Danish, but it's not an individual Danish. It's like one long Danish. But since I have to only use like a nine by nine pan, I'm gonna go ahead and make two. And uh, so it's like crescent roll with cream cheese. I'm gonna use blackberries. So I can't wait. It smells so good. I haven't made it in a while because we're never home. Back over here at camp, uh, we have our canopy up here because of course they said it was a percentage of rain. Not very much, but just in case. Good morning, Cody. Good morning. Isn't there a hurricane supposed to be coming? Uh-huh. I don't know if it's a hurricane or tropical storm, but there's another one hitting Louisiana. I think it hit landfall last night or sometime, but of course we're going to get some kind of rain from it. But we tried to go in a region where it wasn't going to really hit as bad, so we're here. Ugh. But we put our tent back here in this corner next to this bluff. It's just so cool. Look at that.
literally watering. <laughs> and guess who had the idea to cook these? Moi, right here. She was like, I need something to cook. And I was like, man, make those croissant things. Wait, what are they called? Uh, cheese Danish, I cheese, guess you cheese. can call it that. Now, I do want to, I do want people not to be confused. So, what was in here, honey? Okay, so this was, um... Powdered sugar? Powdered sugar. Why do I, why do I keep having brain farts? I don't know. And a speech impediment. Powdered sugar, <laughs> um, <laughs> vanilla, and heavy cream. And then the cream cheese that I put inside, the reason it's a dark color is because I use coconut sugar, but you can use regular sugar. I just didn't have any regular sugar and I had coconut sugar, so I was like, we use it for that. So um, that was a mixture of... Coconut sugar, vanilla, and, and cream cheese. And flour. And Oh yeah, and flour. The, what the flour does is it makes it the kind of thickness here, so it doesn't run everywhere when you're trying to eat it. And you pre mix you pre mix the flour and the sugar at home and put mm -hmm. it in that one container for the cream cheese. Yeah, it just makes it easier. But we're ready. I'm having the time of my life. I am so happy. I love this place. It's magical. And Kelly said something, and I hope y'all don't see it accidentally, but it looks like I pooped oh, my, I forgot about that. my pants. I sit in clay, red clay. This is called true love. Did it come off pretty good? Does it still look like poo poo? If you get right on it. Okay. Now it looks like I paid my plans. We want to hike down the creek and see what we can find. We haven't ever been on this creek very far before. And we are... No, we haven't ever been on it, really. Just in case it rains. Let's shut the vehicle doors. Oh, many of you ask, are the doors always open on our vehicle when we're camping? Pretty much. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. Because uh, we get in and out so much, we just leave it all open. And then if we're at a public campground, we always shut the doors. Unless well, we're right by it. Yeah. Uh, like right now, when we hike, we're going to shut all the doors and lock the vehicle. Look at the beautiful fall colors already starting to come in. We're gone for a week. You know, it looks yeah. like this. I mean... Crazy. <sighs>
So this area has a lot of quartz and the clay that was on Cody's butt is the the clay that normally when you find a lot of points is going to be in that clay. So I just found this pretty little thing. This is a really pretty creek. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Easy to hike up. It's funny, our idea of relaxation is hiking down I a creek. I guess we just can't sit still for very long. I can, for a little bit. But the sun's starting to beam out, and guess what Kelly wants to do? Mm, I'm gonna lay out for a second. And we have to kind of be at the vehicle because we have somebody supposedly oh, yeah. showing up. Yeah. So we think my brother's gonna show up. So I don't know. We'll see. We haven't seen Jonathan. Man, it's been a minute. About three weeks. Um, yeah, not very late. I miss that kid. We have done absolutely nothing and we have loved every minute of it. Kelly has relaxed. I have relaxed. We have a little bit of a problem. Jonathan still has not showed up. We're going to give him just a wee bit longer. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Mark. Mark got us this Atlas of Arkansas. And it's actually working out real handy right now. Page 75. So we're going to see if we can find some higher elevation to see if we can get a hold of Jonathan. And we're using this topo map and we're real close to, actually it's kind of blurry, but we're real close to Blue Washita Mountain. And right here we could be at 1,961 feet, which means we could possibly have phone service there. And that's about a 30 minute drive. However, we thought we would try to give him a little bit longer. So we're gonna hook up the shower and the Hummer and rinse off. Well, we did not have to go get service to call Jonathan cause he just showed up. And I think he's gonna put his tent way over there. It's the only other flat spot. But other than that, I got cleaned up. I think there's enough water left for Cody. I think he's gonna bathe next and if not, we can just fill it up with creek water. We'll let him deal with it because I washed my hair. So I'll let Jonathan set up and then I think I'm gonna cook dinner. I'm really hungry. We are about to cook. What are we cooking? So I'm gonna make my, it's a spinach and artichoke pasta dish and I'm using a penne pasta. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cook my pasta to al dente, which on this package is saying it's anywhere. I'm gonna say I'm gonna do eight minutes for al dente. So why are we cooking the pasta first instead of prepping all the other stuff? Um, so really it's just so I don't waste hot, dirty up extra pots and pans, but I'm trying to make it a one pot dish. So, um, I'm going to boil the pasta in here first, transfer it to this bowl and cook the rest of my ingredients in here, then put the pasta back in here. Okay. I was just asking because normally you always cook the sauce first. Yeah. I just, you know, don't want to. Uh, if I did it the other way, I would have two dishes that had creamy sauce in it. And that's just a pain to clean out here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my water boiling. And while that's boiling, or before it gets boiling, I'm going to toss in a little bit of salt. My water is not completely boiling yet, but sometimes with this Coleman cooker, with this much water, it won't completely come to a boil. It takes a little bit longer. So I'm just going to throw my pasta in there. And I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for eight minutes. Is there vanilla in it? Because vanilla is what I read that buffalo nuts don't like, and that's why this instant works. Well, that's patchouli. But it still works for some reason. We're back on the buffalo net issue. Yeah. We've got a few that, they weren't here last night. They're showing up again. And what we've really learned is shea butter with uh, vanilla extract mixed in it. Rubbed well, on your skin. I, I didn't, I don't do that anymore. Cause it's, I don't know, shea butter's just so thick. Like it's just. It starts um, heating up your skin when you put it on. Yeah, and it's already kind of, well, it's not hot today, but um, the incense works. So I have one, we only have two left. Now it's blowing this way. It seems to work. Um, I don't know. I'm just ready. When does buffalo nat season end? Anybody know? I don't know. However, we got those from Natural Grocer. 
And that's the uh, patchouli flavor. But the vanilla spice. The works. vanilla spice is the most powerful one. Once you put two of those on the ground, like around you, you don't have a problem with buffalo nuts again. It really does work if you're hanging out in one area and you don't want to put a lot of stuff on your skin. I just looked down at our trash and there's this cool um, something. Not sure what it is. Guys, if anybody knows what this is, just let us know. I'm sure it's some kind of caterpillar of some sort. That is too cool. All right, my pasta is al dente, so I just transferred it into this smaller bowl here so I can continue cooking in the large one. So in this bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and add whoop, two tablespoons of butter. And go ahead and turn this burner on. I'm gonna let that butter melt. And then I'm gonna throw in, I've got four cloves of garlic already chopped here. And I've got some spinach. Butter is melted, I'm gonna throw in my garlic. So basically we're just gonna let it wilt. It doesn't take long for this to wilt. I'm just gonna move this here, just getting it out of the way. Cause I'm gonna transfer it to a plate as soon as it's done. So now I'm going to put in some more butter, about a tablespoon, let that melt. My butter's melted, I've got my artichoke heart. Alright, my artichoke is done, so I'm going to put that on the same plate as the spinach. this beetle it's purple where'd it go oh it keeps falling darling y'all's bugs oh man that is a purple beetle get it all over food don't kill it oh to it's got a green bottle Okay, so now I'm gonna add another couple tablespoons of butter to the pan, let that melt. Next, what I'm gonna do is make a roux. So that means that when this butter melts all the way, I'm gonna throw in some flour. And the point is to let it get really thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my flour. And we're gonna whisk this around until it's all gonna combine and it's going to be a brownish color. It's gonna thicken up a little bit. What this is gonna do is help thicken the sauce. It's getting darker in color and thickening up. So I've got about two cups of milk here and I'm gonna pour that in. and combine that all together. So I've got some shredded Parmesan here and I'm gonna do about half a cup. A little bit more. And I've also got some mozzarella and I'm gonna do about a cup of the mozzarella. working hard. My milk is starting to thicken, so I'm gonna throw in all my cheeses I just shredded earlier. Whisk those in there. Of course, we're gonna do salt and pepper. Next, I'm gonna do a little bit of cayenne pepper. Just a little bit, you don't want it to be too spicy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my pasta. Just 
just stuck to the wall. Woo! <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and toss my spinach and my artichoke in there. It is done and I'm going to throw in some red pepper flakes in this jar. Yeah, I just take that off for me. You mean just I'll do it. I'll do it. Look. Okay. Probably not enough because we like things spicy. We're picking this up, people. I think I have some red pepper. We got more right here. Yeah, okay. I bought some. This I ain't know. no playing game, son. Uh, we put this on almost, I feel like a lot of our dishes actually. Did I take a little? I think that'll do. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. And I believe we are ready to serve. I've got some extra Parmesan shredded over here. I'll take this nasty oh, plate. Oh man, I wanted that plate. Wait, you can, you can take the nasty plate. I won't argue with you. I'll get a small. The one and only time I want a nasty plate. Is it oh, fill, fill that new plate. What do you think about that? It's light. It's nice. I know. It's pretty too. Yeah. Y'all ready to eat? Yes, I'm so hungry. Yeah, it smells good. I am so hungry. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Mm. Did we forget something? I feel like I want more, so I thought maybe y'all might want some. Wow. That's so good. So, I'm going to tell everybody a little story. And since it's the month of October, we're going to tell a couple of ghost stories every single camping trip, right? Sure. Kelly's got to find some more. But I don't know if this is really a ghost story, but it's just a story. And it was really, really creepy. I, have I told you this before, John? I don't know. Okay. I read this on the U.S. Forestry Service website. Every year they put out uh, ghost stories about camping. Okay. But this isn't a ghost story, really. It's just freaky. So there was a ranger, and he was taking a group of teenagers hiking. And they were going to go do a 12-mile hike and set up camp and on this 12 mile hike they didn't see any other civilization it was all forest and they just kept hiking but when they finally got to a spot they noticed the guy passed them they didn't think much about it they continued hiking they got to the place where they're going to set up camp and it was a full moon night they stayed up till about 11 o'clock enjoying their time and then the kids went to sleep but the ranger actually slept in a hammock and he set himself up where he could see down the trail that they had come up on and because the moon was completely bright it was about 12 31 o'clock and he couldn't really go to sleep and he looks down the trail and he sees somebody walking up and it looked like that guy who had walked up previously well the guy comes up sits under a tree and just looks at him and just looks at him and the kids that's it doesn't come any closer and just looks. So the guy's kind of freaked out. And the parker or the ranger just sits there in his hammock, keeps looking down the trail, and about an hour and a half passes. It's almost one o'clock, 1.30. And the guy gets up, turns around, and walks away. After telling that freaky story, I think we're gonna hang out around the campfire a little bit longer, but we will see you in the morning.
Good morning, everybody. It's been a very interesting morning. I uh, woke up this morning and the truck would not start. Apparently, we charged too many things. But we were in luck. There were some people that drove by <clears throat> that are going to camp back further on this road. And they had jumper cables. So And Jonathan was here, so that helped out. We had an extra truck in case we had to drive somewhere, but we didn't have to. So we got the truck started it's running right now. And you saw me make a different burrito. I did chorizo, avocado, and um, eggs. And it was actually really good. I think it was good? Delicious. Yeah. I think it might be better than the potato burritos. But anyway. So we're sitting here drinking our coffee. Cody's digging some holes. And um, yeah, we're just enjoying this morning. I am so grateful for the guys that gave us a jumper cable. The problem is, is that I charged some stuff on the phone last, or on the vehicle last night, which drained the battery. But we did start it before we went to bed. We shouldn't drive anywhere. Yeah, I thought it had enough of a charge to reboot it, but we we charged too much stuff. We've learned a lesson that's never happened. It will never happen again. However, we've been enjoying the waterfall, and we are fixing to go to a place we've never been before. Blue Washita Mountain or Washita Blue Mountain. I think it's Blue Washita Mountain. Blue Washita Mountain. And the very tip top peak is called Washita Pinnacle. And we are fishing to go there now. All right, y'all, we made it up to the top of what is it called? Blue Washita Mountain. And they, it's kind of chilly up here, but so apparently they have like, this is like a tower area where they have towers at. But we wanted to come look at the overlook. You can see Lake Washita from here. The drive is really pretty on the way up and uh, we passed the, was it the Washtaw Hiking Trail? Washtaw, yeah. Washtaw Hiking Trail. We passed the parking for that so you can hike that up here. It's really pretty. Well, thanks for joining in our relaxing weekend, and we're happy to see Jonathan. We haven't seen him in a couple weeks. Give, so. give me a hug. I can't reach you or I'll fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if you like this vlog, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and subscribe, and we will catch you on the other. Bye.